Hello guys, so this is uh, the Elephone S8. Elephone's first and maybe even last three bezel-less smartphone because three bezel-less phones are getting kind of old. They are getting replaced with 18 by 9 phones with those infinity screens that are placed in the center of the phone uh, with very um, a narrow upper and a lower bezels. Um, so this thing actually has been announced back in summer 2017, but it took quite a while to become available. But meanwhile, it became available after quite some issues with um, producing enough devices. So I finally got a review sample and have been using it for a couple of days now. And I have to say it's quite a decent phone, even though those cheap bezel-less phones are dying out right now. So let's have a quick look at it. So as you can see, the front um, is almost entirely covered by the screen. We have very narrow left and right bezels and a very slim upper bezel and a very small earpiece there. Unfortunately, no status LED, but there is a proximity and light sensor. And below the screen, we have a, a little thicker bezel with the home button and a front camera. The phone itself um, is very slim, as you can see. Its sides are covered by a metal frame. Pretty nice build quality there, nothing to complain about. Um, looks nice. We have a type C jack on the bottom. Two openings of which one covers a microphone and the other one the media speaker. On the right side we have a red power button and a volume rocker. At the top we have nothing except an environmental microphone. On the top we have nothing except a noise cancelling microphone and on the left side we have uh, the SIM tray which unfortunately only takes uh, two nano SIM cards. There is no SD card slot on this phone. The rear is covered by a nice glossy glass panel which is slightly curved to all sides so it's kind of 3D glass. The camera model sticks out of the body a little bit, but not that much. We have a dual LED flash, but it's only a single tone flash, not a dual tone flash. And on the bottom we have the Elephone logo. As you can see, the back is kind of a fingerprint magnet, but it doesn't scratch so easy, which is a plus. Also the front screen so far remained without any scratches. So let's turn it on. As you can see, the fingerprint scanner works quite well. Nothing to complain about there. And now we are looking at one of the big highlights of the Elephone S8, which is the screen. It's a six inch 16 by nine panel, but with 2K resolution. So the pixel density is really high. As you can see, you can spot any single pixels with the naked eye and even through the camera. It's almost impossible to see individual pixels. And as you can see, the screen quality is top notch. Really good colors, great contrast. It's just a, a really good screen. Really nothing to complain about there. Also, viewing angles are really good. Um, no changes in colors whatsoever. It, it just gets a little bit darker. Also, the screen brightness is very high. Um, it's really not a problem using this phone outdoors under sunlight. Um, they really went for a pretty good display there and also the, the touch screen itself works pretty good. Um, it has almost no input lag. It's just a five point digitizer though, but that's not much of a problem to me. Um, and yeah, in general it works just fine and it's easy to type fast on it and the touch resolution itself and thus also the accuracy is pretty good on this phone. Now in terms of performance, the Elephone S8 is actually a little bit better than most of those other three bezel smartphones from China, which mostly are powered by the Helio P25 processor. This chipset is a little bit faster inside of that, it's the Helio X25, which has um, 10 processor cores, uh, two of them are Cortex-A72 and the other ones are Cortex-A53 cores and we have a quad-core Meili T880 GPU inside of there and even though we have a 2K screen on here, the phone runs buttery smooth with this chipset. I mean, it's really a pleasure to use that phone here um, with typical everyday apps. Just look when I'm scrolling through the Instagram feed here, it's pretty snappy. Maybe a little bit of stuttery here and uh, stuttering here and there, but nothing big, not a big deal. Um, also Facebook feed scrolls fairly smooth, which is 
a pretty demanding action actually a lot of phones struggle with the Facebook feed and stutter like hell then that's really not the case here so performance wise um, the LF1 S8 performs pretty good when using it normally when you play games you notice um, something that's very typical for the Helio X25 let me show you that so now I am running the game unkilled at high graphic settings on the Elephone S8 and as you can see it shows this strange jumping in frame rate. I mean it's running smooth and uh, then frame rate drops then it's running smooth again then frame rate drops again and this creates this strange jumping effect in the rendering of the scene of the game you're playing right now. Um, and that's something a lot of Helio X20, X25 and even X27 phones suffer from and uh, until today I really haven't figured out why that is, if it's some kind of thermal throttling or driver issue or whatsoever. Whatever it is, it just makes playing games uh, less fun with such devices and that includes uh, the Elephone S8. So, I wouldn't call this one a gaming phone. It's a decent performer for everyday tasks like navigating, surfing the web, um, using your social media apps, looking at, at videos or pictures. But when gaming, it just doesn't perform as good as it should, as you can see. I mean, it's, it's playable, but it's really not as smooth as you would expect. Software-wise, we're running stock Android here. As you can see, there are really no optical adjustments besides the launcher, which uses pretty large icons. But of course, you can replace this one with a different launcher. We are running Android 7.1.1 here, so rather up to date. Security patch level is September 5th, 2017. And there also is a custom ROM available, which has the December security patch included. So that's not bad at all and great to see some community support being present here already. Regarding Android 8 Oreo, Elephone promised to release an upgrade. I don't know when it will come but they did promise it so based on previous experiences I think it will come in spring or something like that. We will see about that. Software itself runs fairly smooth and is pretty much bug free. The only thing that annoys me is the home button. You can use the home button as on most Elephone devices to control the system. Tapping it once is back, tapping it long opens the app switch and double tapping it opens uh, or goes back to home. But as you can see I've enabled on screen buttons and that for a reason because this phone has an issue that a lot of phones have that are solely controlled via one button. Let me show you that. If I am going into um, this sub menu here and then want to go back to the home screen and double tap on the home button I go back to the home screen but now look what happened I actually went one level back in the settings so this means when I double tap it also triggers back it's, it doesn't only trigger home but it also triggers back now I really don't understand why Elephone did that because they already had devices with this um, kind of control um, that didn't do that, that actually recognized that you double tapped and didn't trigger the back key then. Um, the Elephone P8 for example um, had a proper implementation of the single button control and was perfectly usable with this but here they kinda screwed it up and despite three OTA updates that have been released already it still hasn't been fixed, so I really doubt they will fix this anytime soon. Um, maybe they will, but as I said, I have some doubts about it, because they had enough time already. Anyhow, you can control this phone with the on-screen buttons as well, so yeah, I personally can live with that, but those of you who dislike the on-screen buttons and prefer the one-button control, um, probably will be mad at the phone. <laughs> and what I also noticed is, and that's kind of strange, is that you can put apps in a window mode there. I mean, what's the purpose of this? Nobody needs that. Um, so this way you could use two apps at the very same time in Windows, but at such a small screen it just doesn't make much sense. On a tablet it would be a nice feature, but on a phone, yeah. 
I already imagined that probably you can hook up some external display via the Type-C port and then use a window mode or something like that, but that's actually not the case. I tried a HDMI dongle and I didn't get any HDMI out with that, so it doesn't support video out on the Type-C port. So yeah, this feature doesn't make much sense to me. Reception quality so far did surprise me in a positive way. This thing has a very, very good mobile reception quality. I have been able to get LTE at some spots here where I live, which is very rarely the case with China phones. So definitely top-notch reception quality. Also for Wi-Fi, no signal losses across the whole house. And it also is a AC Wi-Fi um, module, so I can actually reach up to 200 Mbit per second of downstream with this phone, which is the maximum my internet connection supports. Bluetooth does work perfectly fine as well, and even GPS is pretty good on this phone. I already tested this one. So as you can see here, decent GPS reception quality. Um, accuracy is a little bit low at 7.3 meters, but that happens very often recently with MediaTek devices, but actually it doesn't cause any issues. As you can see, I did a tracking session here and the route was always right on spot where I walked. So yeah, GPS performs quite well on this one. Glad to see this. Also, um, there's a compass, so the map aligns itself when you do pedestrian navigation and you also can use 360 degree videos um, thanks to a gyroscope inside of there, which also works well. Audio quality of the internal speaker is okay, not perfect, but it's okay. Um, but it doesn't use the full potential of the speaker, um, which is noticeable when using the custom room I talked about earlier, which comes with Viper for Android pre-installed. And when boosting the speaker with this, you get much more intense basses and in general, much better audio quality. So the speaker itself is pretty good, just in the stock ROM, it isn't perfect. Regarding telephony quality, I can't tell you much right now because I actually haven't done any phone calls yet on this phone. This needs to be done and I will cover this, of course, in the full and in-depth review. Another great thing about the Elephone S8 is that they didn't went for a dual camera like all the other manufacturers do and waste a lot of potential with because they just can't do proper dual cameras. They're wasting resources on that and Elephone apparently understands that and didn't implement a dual camera due to that but instead focused on a proper single camera. And I have to say they did a half decent job um, with this. It's not a perfect camera, it has some issues, I won't go into details now, we will do this in the full review. But in general you can take decent pictures at daylight with this camera and even during sunset. As you can see here, this has been taken during sunset and as you can see, um, quite a lot of detail and sharpness, colors look realistic. It's, it's, it's just an okay picture. I mean, I won't complain about that. Look at this. Also not bad at all. It's using the um, Sony IMX220, which is a 21 megapixel sensor. So they have quite some experience with this sensor. They already used it in a couple of other phones, including the Elephone P8. In the Elephone P8 it did perform a little bit better. So the Elephone S8 is a little behind, but still. I'm satisfied with daylight results. Just at night, pictures quickly become blurry and noisy. So if you are into low light photography, this phone isn't for you. But for daylight pictures, it's totally fine. And actually, it looks better than pretty much 80% of the other cheap China phones you get around at around 150 to 200 euros. Um, this phone is priced at around 200 euros right now. What did surprise me a lot is the quality of the front camera. It's only using a 8 megapixel sensor, but from Sony, so it's a quality one. And that was the video. I need the picture. There we go. And as you can see, amazing amount of detail. I mean, this front camera is really, really good, at least here at daylight. Um, when you take pictures in a low light, it doesn't look that good, but at daylight, Pictures just pop, looks just really good and also videos look really good. Actually videos look better 
than the ones recorded with the rear camera, which is kind of strange. Looks like they need to do some more optimization with that. And regarding battery life, we all know that the Helio X25 is a very demanding chipset on the battery. It needs a lot of energy. Um, but uh, they squeezed a 4000 mAh battery inside of there and this one actually covers the chipset and the 2K screen really well. As you can see I'm getting an average screen on time of 6 hours and 48 minutes there. Screen off time 116 hours is a really decent value and combined use is 28 hours. So one charge easily lasts me throughout a day. So battery life really isn't bad at all on the Elephone um, S8. And also charging time is, is fairly okay to charge it from 20-20%. You need about two hours with the power supply that comes with it. Um, which did surprise me a little because it actually doesn't um, support Pump Express Plus. So there is no fast charging. But still um, the charging is rather speedy. So we reached the end of the first impressions. What am I saying about the Elephone S8? Well, um, it has its weaknesses, but also its strengths. It's a pretty interesting phone for the money, I think. And if you like it, I, sh I think you, sh you can't do much wrong with this, especially considering that we already have some community support for it, which is nice to see. It's a very beautiful phone, no doubt about it, and it has a great, great, great screen. And the camera is also usable. Battery life seems good, reception quality is good. Um, so yeah, um, the biggest weakness of it probably is um, uh, that um, it doesn't have a 3.5mm check and also that the status LED is missing. But besides of that, it's not a bad phone uh, they uh, did it there. So Elephone continues to deliver. <laughs> they don't deliver like Xiaomi do. But considering that this is Elephone, um, they did quite a decent job there like they did with Actually, most of the phones they launched in 2017. I mean, if you remember the um, Elephone P8 Mini, this one was good. Then we had the Elephone P8. Uh, this one was really good as well. Now we have the Elephone S8, which is pretty decent too. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Elephone S9, um, which apparently uh, they bump their game up even further with. So that being said, thanks for watching this unboxing slash first impression video. Stay tuned for the full review of the Elephone S9, which is coming in about a week or so. Thanks for watching. See you then. Bye bye.